You ever see a video so stupid it made you physically ill? Jonathan, I know you're talking about my video, so shut up. Anyway, the video I'm referencing this week comes from the walking talking contradiction herself, Riley Dennis. So let's see what this fucking idiot has to say this week. <laughs> Look, before we get into this video, I just want to note that obviously I'm really white. Whoa, too white, too white, way too white. That's better. Continue. White. So when I talk about white people, I don't mean it in a those white people kind of way. Like I'm somehow detached from that. When I say white people, I mean myself included. I just don't want it to come across as like, I'm one of the good ones. Because I'm still learning how to combat racism and white supremacy myself. So I hope that makes sense. Okay, you can say it all you want, but we know you think you're one of the good ones. We know you're trying to be one of the good ones. And also, you don't have the capacity to make sense. Anyway, the point of this video is that not all white people bullshit. If you don't know what I mean, let me give you an example. Let's say a person of color experiences some kind of racism from a white person. In frustration, they say, Ugh, white people are horrible. At this point, you can expect some kind of white person to pop up out of the bushes and scream, not all white people, you shouldn't generalize us like that. That's reverse racism. Yeah, it happens. So what the fuck is the big deal? So these white people, the ones who constantly scream, not all white people, and reverse racism, argue that making a generalization about white people is just as bad as making a generalization about people of color. And that right there is 100% correct. So why the hell do we need to talk about this? They think that saying white people are horrible is just as bad as saying black people are horrible. On like a total surface level, you might think, yeah, that makes sense. Those statements are both generalizations about a race. But if you look just a little bit harder at the cultural, social, political, and historical context that these phrases are set in, it's pretty easy to see that they are not equivalent statements. Translation. Riley's got a problem with it, so she's going to make shit up to explain why it's bad. And none of it's going to be freaking true. I mean, black people in the U.S. were slaves, and then they were considered three-fifths of a person, and then they lived under Jim Crow segregation laws, and even today, they still experience systemic racism on a daily basis. Riley, literally nobody disagrees with the fact that Jim Crow, segregation, and slavery were all terrible things that happened. But all of that is history, and that's exactly where it needs to be. That's where you need to put it and leave it. There is no systematic oppression going on today, and you have no examples of systematic oppression going on today. And the closest, and the closest examples you have ever provided are just isolated incidences that happen to people of color that literally could have happened to you or me for any reason. The prejudice and discrimination that was built into our institutions and systems didn't go away overnight with the Civil Rights Act of 1965. Racism and by extension white supremacy both still have a deep hold on this country. Okay, Riley, sad thing is that racists are always going to exist. I hate racist people as much as the next guy. But the best way to deal with racism is to learn how to handle it when it comes your way. And as far as white supremacy having a hold on this country and racism having a hold on this country, none of that is true. If that's true, please tell me how we had a black president for the last eight freaking years. To be a person of color in the U.S. today means to live under a system that was not only not built for you, but was built to harm you. If you don't believe that people of color are marginalized and oppressed in a way that white people are not, you're just being willfully ignorant at this point. <laughs> It does not get any more ironic than Riley J. Dennis telling us that we're being willfully ignorant. <laughs> Do you even hear yourself? Point. So I'm going to assume that we can all agree on this. If we can't agree, I don't think I'm going to be able to convince you. But there will be some links in the description if you'd like to challenge your worldview with some facts and statistics. Okay, just to be fair, I did look up the articles that were in Riley's description. Most of them were a bunch of bullshit. Most of them are placing racism where there is no racism. There was one trying to perpetuate that myth that only white people can be racist, which is horse shit. And it's also got one article describing a situation that I will admit probably was racist. However, it was one incident that happened back in Oklahoma 20 years ago.
Anyway, the point of all of this is just to give you some background for why generalizing statements about white people versus generalizing statements about black people are not equivalent. They don't exist in a vacuum. Black people in the U.S. have been oppressed and continue to be oppressed in ways that white people will never fully be able to understand. Were oppressed? True. Are oppressed? Bullshit. So when you say something in 2017, knowing everything that has happened up until now, your words live in the context of this time period, in this culture, in this political context. They can't be separated from that. So let's say you're a white person and you say black people are horrible. In a greater context, you are a member of a group that oppressed black people for a long time and continues to do so today. I am not a part of any such group. All of that shit happened long before I was born. I can already hear the white people chiming in saying that they weren't alive during slavery, so they shouldn't be responsible for it. Which is true, so shut up about it. For it. And like, sure, you're not directly responsible for slavery, but you continue to benefit from the oppression of black people which has had its roots in slavery. That's a fact. Ah shit, ah shit. Sorry to all my new subscribers for thinking you were gonna get me to prove him wrong and everything like that. He just said that it's a fact, so obviously I'm wrong. And I know white people get really sensitive about this, and I get it, I used to be in middle school too. Oh, fuck you, Riley. You can't use the middle school insult on us when you have the IQ of a preschooler. Actually, now that I think about it, that's kind of an insult to preschoolers. And I wanted to believe that I lived in a system that was fair and equal and didn't value me over someone else just because of the color of my skin. But then I grew up and I realized that racism was still very much alive. So I'm not saying that white people need to hate themselves or have guilt over this. I just think we need to recognize our role as people who have benefited from racism and who are a part of a group that has oppressed and continues to oppress black people. Nobody is oppressing anybody. People of color have the same rights as you or me. Just accept that that is the reality and that you no longer have anything to fight for. And then we need to work to fight against that. And part of what that means is that when you, as a white person, say black people are horrible, your words are just perpetuating the oppression of black people that white people have been doing for a long time. You're continuing that racist cycle. You're adding fuel to the fire. Okay, if anybody is adding fuel to the fire, it's you social justice warriors. This racism crap was pretty much obliterated back when I was young until you guys started bringing it back up. On the other hand, if a black person says white people are horrible, it doesn't have that weight behind it. The power dynamics are completely different. It doesn't perpetuate systemic racism. It doesn't result in the institutional oppression of white people. It's just an expression of anger against an oppressor group. That's all there is to it. No, you dense motherfucker. It ain't any better or worse, no matter who says it. A white person saying it is no better than a black person saying it, and vice versa. End of story. Do it. The two statements don't carry the same weight or historical context. For centuries, white people insulting black people has led to their enslavement, disenfranchisement, and oppression. Meanwhile, black people insulting white people hasn't had anywhere near the same impact on white people. They're just on completely different levels. No! How dumb can you actually get? The enslavement of black people happened because other black people in Africa were selling them to this country. You fucking idiot. It had nothing to do with insults, whatever the fuck that's supposed to mean. And it's painfully simplistic to avoid all social, political, cultural, and historical context just to make these statements seem comparable. The best analogy I can think of to demonstrate this kind of power dynamic in a really simple way is this. Well, I don't think you can say anything dumber than you already have, so... This. Imagine there's a queen and a peasant. Obviously the queen has a lot of power and the peasant does not have a lot of power. Now the peasant can point at the queen and say, throw her in jail, and it won't have any effect. The guards aren't going to listen to a peasant. But if the queen points to the peasant and says, throw her in jail, then the guards will listen and the peasant will end up in jail. Both parties said the same phrase directed towards the other one, but one of those phrases had a lot more power because of the context. What you just said is one of the most insanely idiotic things I have ever heard. At no point in your rambling, incoherent response were you even close to anything that could be considered a rational thought. Everyone in this room is now dumber for having listened to it. I award you no points, and may God have mercy on your soul. You are trying to lecture us on racism, yet you just compared white people to royalty and people of color to peasants.
I didn't think it was possible for you to say anything dumber than you already have, and I was proven the fuck wrong. Because of the context. One of those phrases put someone in jail, and the other one did not. If you ignore the context of a situation, you miss a huge chunk of the story. If I told you that story, but I just said there were two people who each shouted at the other one, throw her in jail, without any context, you'd probably be confused as to why only one of them ended up in jail. Honestly, I'm still confused on why you think white people have so much power to do so much damage to people of color. Because to me, it just sounds like you're under the impression that people of color are too weak to take care of themselves. Which is way more racist than anything you are claiming white people to have ever done in this video. Because you'd be ignoring the power that each person had or didn't have and the general context behind it all. That's why reverse racism isn't a thing. Because systemic racism hurts and oppresses people of color, not white people. While people can certainly be rude or prejudiced towards white people, that still doesn't mean that white people face systemic oppression in anywhere near the same way that people of color do. I can't believe I have to repeat this again, but none of what you just said is true. Nobody experiences systemic racism. Not black people, not white people, nobody. And anybody can be racist. It doesn't matter what color your skin is or anything. Anybody can be racist. Anybody can be an asshole. Like, exhibit A. Okay, so context matters when it comes to generalizations, but also when white people say not all white people, they're usually taking a complaint about racism and making it about themselves. The only time I've heard generalizations from people of color about white people has been after a person of color has experienced some kind of racism. So, for example, let's say a person of color on Twitter tweets something about systemic racism. In response, they get a bunch of ignorant white people replying and calling them racial slurs and saying that racism doesn't exist and all of that. In response, they say something to the effect of, I am so so tired of white people. They're horrible. And that's when the not all white people crowd comes in. And see, part of the reason that happens is because we are trying to prevent shit like this video that I'm responding to from happening. Some white person pops up and says, not all white people are like that, I'm one of the good ones. In this way, all that saying not all white people does is absolve that white person of any guilt and make the situation about them. Why do you have a need to insert yourself there and defend yourself? Why do you have the need to make pathetic YouTube videos defending people that could give two shits less what you think? It doesn't make the situation any better. It doesn't get rid of the racist nonsense that that person has had to endure, and it doesn't challenge it either. It's just a very indifferent, don't worry, we're not all like that, which isn't too reassuring, I'd imagine, since that doesn't negate all the racist bullshit that person gets. It's just a way of making yourself feel better, and I've never seen it improve a situation or combat racism in any way. You know what, I've never seen your virtue signaling combat anything either, but here you are doing it again. Understand that you want to defend yourself and you feel like when someone makes a comment about white people that it affects you. But the truth of the matter is that you're going to be just fine. Generalizations about white people are not going to hurt you. They're not going to contribute to unfair housing discrimination against you or lead to a racial hiring bias against you because you're white. Okay, this has to be the dumbest video you made because you said so much stupid shit in this video. I can't even pinpoint what is the stupidest. None of this housing or hiring discrimination actually happens. There are laws against that. If you feel discriminated against because of housing or a job you lost or didn't get or whatever, and you have solid proof that it was because of the color of your skin, you can sue the business. There are laws to protect people from that. Do you not pay attention to this shit? Or do you just make shit up? I'm going with the latter. Remember, context matters. White people are not hurt by generalizations about white people in the same way that people of color are hurt by generalizations about people of color. Unarmed black people are shot by police regularly because of the generalization that they're violent and dangerous. No, you fucking moron. Cops don't shoot you because of a generalization of you being violent or dangerous. They shoot people when they act violent or dangerous. If you don't do what the cop says, the cop will respond accordingly. If you make that cop feel like his or her life is in danger, they will act accordingly, up to and including shooting you in the head dead.
White people don't have a comparable generalization that affects them like that. There is no comparison. So I get that your feelings as a white person might be a little hurt by a generalization about you, but it's not going to result in any real world systemic bias against you. So stop trying to downplay the frustrations of people of color by saying not all white people. Just let it go. Let it go. Let it go. If you are a white person who is genuinely working towards anti-racism, then I don't think you would feel the need to assert not all white people at every chance you get. Yeah, well, I don't think an SJW that is working towards ending racism is going to compare white people to royalty and black people to peasants, but here you made that freaking analogy. Anyway, I'm just going to stop the video here because all she does is repeat all her arguments real quickly and then conclude the video and then goes on about her day. Anyway, I still have no idea how Riley actually says the shit that she does, makes the freaking video, puts in all these freaking jump cuts that make it hard as fuck for me to edit the fucking video, and then watches it through, says, hmm, I did a good job, and then puts the son bitch on YouTube. Like, it, it's just beyond my comprehension. <sighs> anyway. I hope you all enjoyed the video, especially after the torture I had to go through to make the freaking thing. Like, not just listening to Riley talk for hours, but just this video infuriated me every time I listened to it. I actually decided to go through the trouble of reading the articles to just to be fair. And then also adding in that stupid Let It Go clip, which is going to be stuck in my head for the rest of the week. And also probably get me a little shit from my brothers because they know I fucking hate that song. But, anyway, if you liked the video, give it a like. If you're new to the channel, give me a like and a subscribe. And I will see you next week with a new video. Till then, catch y'all later.